I going to show you and prove to you that God hates feminism. If you have a King James Bible, you can go to Numbers chapter 12. I'll read the whole chapter, and this is really good proof that God hates it when a woman starts to, you know, run her mouth and pipe up. And obviously, you know, if the man is living in sin, in unrepentant sin, the woman can lovingly try to correct him or say, hey, you know, what you're doing is not right according to Scripture. But to just go and run her mouth and, you know, against the man, it's not right. And God hates that. And that's the corrupt fruit that feminism produces. Okay. Numbers chapter 12. I'm going to read the whole chapter proving that God hates feminism. Okay. Start at verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So there was an interracial marriage there. And of course, the Bible does condemn interracial marriage in numerous places. Ezra chapter 9, Ezra chapter 10, Ezra chapter, uh, I think it's, sorry, Nehemiah chapter 9, sorry, Nehemiah chapter 10, Nehemiah 13, numerous places condemn interracial marriage. Okay, so Moses was in an interracial marriage, and, you know, it wasn't right. But look what happens. Uh, verse 2, And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Verse 3, Now the man Moses was very weak, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation, and they came three, yeah, and they three came out. Sorry, not good at reading on a computer. It does hurt my eyes. I am in the future going to get some of those blue light glasses. They are uh, help with my eye strain because I get headaches and stuff. But continuing, verse five. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they came, or and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. Verse 8, With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, were, not, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Look, at, look, at, look what happens. Verse 9, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the clouds departed off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam and said, Behold, she was leprous. Hmm. I'm going to point something interesting as we keep reading. Verse 11, And Miriam said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Look, verse 12, Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh hath is hath cons half consumed, when she uh, cometh out of the mother's of his mother's womb. And goes down there. Keep reading to verse 13. And Moses cried and, said unto, and cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. Verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father but hath but spit in her face, so sh should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, set, let her be received in again. Again, not going to read it on the computer. It does mess up my eyes. Uh, verse 15. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Verse 16. And afterward the people were moved from Hasaroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. What happened here? Well, notice how Miriam and, and uh, Aaron both committed the same sin. They spoke against Moses. But notice how Miriam got the harsher punishment. She became a leprous, which is Aaron didn't. What's going on there? Well, God hates it when a woman starts to run her mouth against God's servants and a woman starts to run her mouth against the man. Obviously, if there is legitimate sin going on, the man is unrepentant of, she, the woman can lovingly try to correct him. But Aaron and Moses just run, ran their mouth against Moses. Sorry, Aaron and, and uh, Miriam. Sorry, Aaron and Miriam ran their mouth against Moses. They were running their mouth. And God didn't like that. And God gave Miriam the harsher punishment for attempting to just rebuke and run her mouth against the man. God hates it when a woman starts to run her mouth and just, you know, pipe up against a man. It's, that, it's a very serious sin. And that's what feminism produces. Feminism produces, it goes against the Bible, the Bible standard of the woman being the meek and quiet, quiet spirit. And it turns the woman into a loud mouth, just high-minded, uh, just, you know, someone who just runs their mouth against men and thinks they're on the same playing field as men. No, they're not.
The reason why women have to have a man over them is because Adam was not deceived, okay? Eve was deceived by the serpent. Adam knew better. The only reason why he ate the fruit was because he didn't want to spend eternity without Eve. Let me show you that scripture, okay? Women need a man over them because they can be easily deceived and manipulated. Proven fact, okay? They have to have a man over them because the man has more discernment. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Okay? She was deceived. Adam was not. Adam knew better, but he did it anyway because he didn't want to spend eternity without her. Okay? God hates it when a woman starts to try to be on an equal playing field as a man and just running her mouth against a man. That's what feminism produces. Okay? Feminism is evil. Feminism is wicked in the eyes of God. Feminism is a very serious sin. Okay? It goes against the natural order of men and women. That's simple. So don't be deceived by feminism and don't be deceived by this modern feminist movement. There is no such thing as Christian feminism. That's a heresy. Okay? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.